And hello, fellow gamers. I am back yet again playing Super Mario World. I am going to continue playing the file that I've been playing so far. Last time I did the Chocolate Island. This time is going to be the Valley of Bowser, plus this level right here, the Sunken Ghost Ship. And this is actually uh, one of my... I don't know if you'd say favorite levels in the game, but it's certainly very interesting to me. And I can show you how to get a bunch of lives over here, too, if, if it doesn't eat up too much time, that is. Basically, you just swim up into this corner and keep doing it. And you keep bouncing off this bullet bill right here, and since you're swimming, it counts as not touching the ground, so the points from this just keep adding up. Obviously, this is not a very fast method of getting lives, uh, but I'll get a few here since I just started playing. Face Deb says, subscribe to me. Sorry, dude, can't. I'm playing a game right now. <laughs> anyway, that's getting kind of boring. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on playing. See, Nate Dog says that uh, he had trouble with this level, so much trouble until I watched a YouTube video on beating it. Uh, yeah, the key here is to know that the distribution... Whoa, see, those, there's those ghosts. The distribution of these ghosts is not random. It follows two uh, preset patterns. There's this one right here, and then it fades to this other one. And there's usually always like a little circle of ghosts there that's safe. So you go a little bit, and generally stay in the center. And see, there's that circle of ghosts again. So it repeats over and over and over. As long as you can avoid those... I don't know what those are, the squid things or whatever that were flying around. It's not too bad. And always remember to face the ghosts. Phase Dub says, Avery won. Um, don't know what you mean. Uh, explain, please. The Nate Dog says that's the party was stuck on was the ghosts, and he thinks that they're called eeries. That's right, they are they are called eeries. Uh, I remember those from the end sequence now. And then there's this part where you're falling forever. Now look where I positioned myself. You didn't see it, but there was a corner of the ceiling that was sticking out up there, and pretty much if you just fall straight down from there, you will land, I think, right on top of the crystal at the bottom. And there's going to be a platform that gets in the way. think. Yeah, right there. And then there's those things flying everywhere. There it is. <laughs> that sequence right there only happens once in the entire game of the, uh, the Bowser skull raising up out of there. Um, because now it, it's up for the rest of the game. And I like the music that it does during it too, and the, the whole screen shaking makes it feel epic, as the kids are saying these days. And now we're officially in the uh, Valley of Bowser. Come get it, meat. <laughs> I'm small right now. Never hurts to always carry a weapon with you for situations like that. See, which way do I go this way? Uh, fuck! The mold just literally bit my ass. I like how this first one is trapped inside those blocks. Because I got the Red Switch Palace. What the hell was that? Some kind of rustling noise behind me. Cat must be doing something. Mm. 
Yummy delicious power up. Ooh, there's the midway tape. And how the hell? You go up and around? Yeah. Oh, well, now I can't get up there. Fuck. Oh, well. As long as I can... That pisses me off when it does that. I was going to say, as long as I can get to the end of the level without dying, then it won't matter that I missed the midway tape. So now that I've formed that bridge right there, I can go around the corner and get up there. Oh, you fucker! He jumped instead of plowed through it. Try again. I never usually go up here. Yeah, not bad. Got some lives in there. Of course, that pipe actually took me back, which explains why I don't normally go that way. I hope it doesn't spawn another mole here. Okay, good. Since I kept that one on the screen, it didn't spawn another one. See if I can take this block with me to the to the uh, the end tape. Yes, I can. Or you power up. Okay, Valley Bowser two. Oh, I remember this. This level takes forever. <laughs> yeah, that is my cat messing around behind me. Ah, oh, shit. You fat cat, you distracted me. If I had Yoshi wings, I could take the piss ant route. Or if I had Yoshi, I could use the Yoshi wings. Up here is a, uh, I think it's a green block that's up there. Because I, I always manage to get a cape out of that. And no, you cannot fly up and over this. I've tried. This section right here is sort of auto-scrolling without the auto-scrolling. <laughs> Because you can still move the screen wherever you want. But you're always waiting for this thing in the background to take you up and down. And it gets increasingly tight the further you go. Which is normally a good thing. See what I mean right there? It's really close. And if you get squished by this thing, it's instant death. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got some, ugh, damn. 
And fuck those coins down there, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Run, 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 because this thing goes up and up and up. Now, see right there? It forms a staircase. That's a hint. Because you can go up and over this part. And there's a secret back hill. <laughs> Face Dab says, uh, in reference to the Valley Bowser 1, that pipe that I went in, says, a secret that takes you to the back of COPU. I think I know what you meant to say there, but yeah, it's a secret that took me back. Okay, so, Valley Fortress. And this, if you, th if you thought the spike pillars were nuts in Can Candy's Castle, they're beyond insane in this level. Like in Candy's Castle, they start out slow and simple, and then they become batshit. See, and then this set gets a little bit faster. The jumps progressively get a little bit more precarious. Yeah. And then it gets really crazy. Jesus. I haven't ended on the thing before, so... I'll do that. <laughs> All the other castles in the game I've jumped back onto the bridge. And that leads you to the back door. So right now, I could actually beat the game without doing any, any of the rest of the levels here in the Valley of Bowser. Um, but I'm going for all 96 exits. So I'm gonna do them. And I think that the part of the reason why it puts all these bats up near the ceiling in here is so that you can't try to fly over this. Bit of juggling, past the time. <laughs> Take that. Oh damn! I should have brought Yoshi in here. Should have gone back and gotten a Yoshi. Could have saved me a ton of time. Oh well. Because if you use the Yoshi wings, it of course takes you to the, uh, the special Yoshi bonus stage, at the end of which takes you out of the level, and that counts as beating the level normally. So I could have skipped all of this shit. That's okay though, it's not like it's hard, it just takes a while. Them claustrophobes, let me out, let me out, let me out. <laughs> 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 
Bam! <laughs> Take that mole. I like that these Switch Palace blocks are filled in here. Otherwise, the only way to get across this would be to jump down onto the mole and use them as a platform. Okay, so uh, this ghost house I know has two exits, and then I think um, the level to the left has one, and then the one in the upper left has two as well, because one of those goes to Star Road. Boop! <laughs> Bet you didn't know you could kill, you could kill those, huh? <laughs> Where do I go here? Let's try going this way. I remember doing it like this. I remember something about the third door here, too. Is this the exit? It is the exit. Tormor says tight squeeze. I do like a tight squeeze. Okay, so that was a regular exit. Now see if I can remember how to get the secret exit. Oh shit. Clip that bubble with my toenail. Try going all the way to the end. And yes, by the way, I'm not missing that uh, that star that's back there. I did see it. Just don't want to stop and get it. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. yes, 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 I remember this. So, you take this switch. Do not hit it right here. Go over here. And then drop it for a second. And then there's a door that leads out of this room that leads to the secret exit. It's in the upper right-hand corner of this room. And now you get up to it is you use this to form a staircase which I will then fill in with blocks using the switch and I did it dead on holy shit I don't know if I've ever done that because that's kind of tricky to get into if you don't line it up right Okay, that's that. Oh god, this level. <laughs> These platforms here, as soon as you jump on them and land on them, then they stay active for the number of seconds equal to the number that's on it. Actually, I don't know if it's a number of seconds or not, but you get the hang of how long they last. Oh shit! <laughs> Fuck that up. Mm -hmm. I could have actually turned that into a one up if I uh, bounced off of those Koopa bodies. Koopa Troopa bodies that um, came out of those shells. Can I go in one of these? Yes, I can. It's shit. <laughs> hey, we have somebody, somebody else new in the chat. It is ST33LE that, that I'm going to pronounce Steel. Steel says boobs. I love boobs, man. We're already on the same page. This is awesome. Steel also says who's waiting till midnight for Mario. Uh, what do you mean? Does something happen at midnight? Is that when uh, Super Mario Run comes out, maybe? I 
remember something about taking this spring with me. Bill. Whoop. Oh, guess I wanted to stay up there. Maybe I can still get that with the spring. Ha! Take that, game designer. Next level, like I said, this one has two exits. And I know what the secret one is. <laughs> I like spin jumping off of all the weird things. And as you can see there, yes, you can kill Charging Chuck with uh, fireballs. I remember this. I guess this is literally taking me back right here. <laughs> come on, come on. No, there's Yoshi in there. Hmm. Uh, two ways to go down right here. Uh, this way, if you're big, you can spin jump down through, or if you're not, you can just fall. Falling is faster. Of course, I think there's a one-up up there. So I just got the midway tape. So that means um, what I should probably do is try to get the secret exit at the end of this because you have to have Yoshi to do it, and I already have Yoshi. If I die, then I start back at the midway without Yoshi and then I have to beat the level so that I can then start the whole level over again <laughs> with y coming in with Yoshi. Unless I, um... Never mind, I just did it. <laughs> like, unless I went to another level, got Yoshi, and came back, and then started at the, at the midway, and then went through and got the key and the secret exit. So that's yet another way to get to Bowser's Castle. You motherfucker. That's right, just run your ass into the lava and melt. That's brilliant. <laughs> you see that? That's skills. And miraculously, another Yoshi! <laughs> This time around, it doesn't really. Whoa! <laughs> doesn't really matter if I lose Yoshi or not, because now I'm just trying to get to the the normal exit. Where it says Yoshi. Ah, oh, so your autocorrect didn't kill it that time. So uh, now you know all you have to do is put extra O's into it. <laughs> all right, so Larry's castle. And then I can go in the front door. Or I could go in the back door. I'll go in the back door, it's easier. I do like going in the back door. And 
And sort of like in Roy's castle, which was uh, castle number five, um, the path that this thing takes, again, is not random. And I've done it so many times that uh, I just have it memorized at this point. By which I mean, I'm making it look like I'm really skilled right now, and I'm not, it's just memorization. <laughs> Now for this one, unlike in Roy's castle, you actually do want to ride this one all the way down. It does not take you to hell. <laughs> it, in fact, takes you to the midpoint. And a mushroom that'll take your feather in the, reser in the reserve box. And Jormor says, I'm trying to pay better attention. That's good, Jormor. Faze Deb says, Larry. And Nate Dog says, Larry was the first Koopa Kid in Super Mario Brothers 3, and a new Super Mario Brother, new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Yeah, but why does he have to be the last in Super Mario World? I've wondered that too, actually. In my opinion, he's 100% Grade A first boss. <laughs> Damn Magic Koopa! I have been able to do it before. See what I did right there? If you jump, his shot will home in on you, so you can actually use the Magikoopa shot to bust through the wall if you don't have a cape, and now I'm running out of time. Shit. But uh, as I was saying before, I have done it before where um, you, can, uh, you can get close enough to the Magikoopa with a cape, and you can knock the wand out of his hand. Take that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Yeah, come on. Running out of time. <laughs> and Larry is a clone of... Who's the first one? Lemmy? Fuck it, I did it. <laughs> but, um, unlike... Lemmy, Larry, has the additional fireballs jumping up. One of which hit me in the face. <laughs> See if this is the one I remember what it is. Yep. And I think that my stereo is reversed here. <laughs> because uh, the castle landing should have came out of, the, out of the right channel instead of the left. So I think maybe my cables are backwards. Nate Dog says, uh, Iggy was the first in this game. Okay. So that means Lemmy must have been the one in the Vanilla Dome. Boop. And let's go beat the game now. The back door is different from the front door in that it lets you skip the first two-thirds of the castle. So you instantly start right at, th at this part. So you don't have to mess with the, uh, the doors at the beginning or the diverging paths. And you can also get smacked right into a ninja, that's a bonus. <laughs> Use the weapon. And the difference between that is um, the back door has this midway tape right here, and I think the front door does not. Maybe it does. Okay, here comes Bowser. I'm gonna hide behind this block here. Maybe he won't see me. See, is he out? Is he out yet? Ah, shit! He saw me. <laughs> 
I, I'm just making that up. That That's just a thing that I do to amuse myself in this part. You can't actually hide from him. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> Face Deb says, Did you do the. Did I do the what? Oh, damn, that was just a little too fast. I'd never actually done that before. So I wanted to try it. <laughs> oh, Face Dab says, did you do the special world? I have not yet. Um, this is not going to be the last uh, segment of the game that I play. I'm going to do a Star World next and then the special world. Uh, but not in this play session, though. This particular session is just the Valley of Bowser. Doesn't Peach look very not Peach whenever she pops out like that? I mean, whenever she sticks her head and arms up out of the thing, not when she pops out. You can't have Peach popping out in this game, it's a Nintendo game. It'd become X-rated. Phase Deb says, okay, I'm subbing you. Excellent. I thought when you said before, when you said sub, that you were, that you said that you'd sub me. But I guess you were asking me to sub you. <laughs> but, uh, thanks for the sub, regardless. And so, that is, uh, the game beaten. I'm gonna go ahead and let it play the ending sequence here. You see how the screen flashes like that for the fireworks? I wonder if subsequent releases of this game kind of toned that down a bit. Um, because they've done that f for some of the re-releases of some of the older games because of people that have, um, what is it called, like visual epilepsy? It's the thing where people can have a seizure from seeing uh, certain patterns of uh, lights or rapidly flashing lights like that. <laughs> Um, I know that uh, Super, Mar Super Mario RPG was one of those games that they toned down. If you look at the Virtual Console release of that game, there's a couple of abilities in the game like, um, like Static E is one of those abilities that's normally like a really screen flashy electric effect, and they toned that down for the Virtual Console release. <laughs> Sean says, I feel cheated that you didn't play the whole castle. And I feel superb in cheating you, Sean. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I did go through the full castle in the first Super Mario World video that I did, where I showed you the fastest uh, path through the game, and that path, that path bleh, takes you to the front door, so I had to play the entire castle. So if you want to see the whole castle, uh, watch that video. <laughs> Jormwer says that Peach looked like maybe she's not, she wasn't so happy to be rescued. You notice how she just kind of floated and fell, but just kind of straight down out of Bowser's uh, whirly, spinny thing. She was just like, meh, I've been saved. Mm-hmm. 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 
And this is where we see all the names of the enemies. Uh, something I think I will be doing is once I um, in two uh, two streams from now when I play the special world since that changes a lot of the enemies in the game I think I will beat the game again in that segment so I can show you how those enemies are changed in the ending sequence as well and it doesn't just change their graphics in the ending sequence it also changes their names too like instead of uh, the Koopas in the previous screen it says Mask Koopas because for some reason after you beat the special world all the Koopas in the game are now wearing like Mario helmets <laughs> doesn't really look like Mario, it's weird right there why is there not the uh, the rotating thing and that's because when you're actually fighting Reznor at the end of a castle um, or fortress or whatever the the rotating thing that says Reznor on it is actually the background in that scene and that's what's doing the rotating and they did it that way because the uh, that uses the Super NES's built-in mode 7 uh, graphic scaling and rotation but it only works for backgrounds so um, that's how it's done. In uh, games like F-Zero, where it looks sort of 3D, but the ground is rotating like that, that's still the background in that game. Um, they just scaled it and rotated it and rotated like that to make it look pseudo 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sean says, I always wondered how people in a pre-internet world knew the names of all the characters. And Jormor says it's all in the manual. Yeah, that's true. Um, seems like uh, Nintendo is very diligent about naming all the characters in their games. Um, especially in like the Zelda series, too. Like, every last enemy and everything has a name in it. Even going all the way back to the very first Zelda game. Um, everything's got a name. <laughs> So that is the uh, end of this here segment, this here gameplay, this here recording. So uh, for the people that are watching on the recording, thanks for watching, and I'll play two more of this, and then it'll be done. So see you next time.